Hello, and welcome back to my series on building a web server from scratch in C. Last time we parsed out the HTTP request that a client would be sending us into its three constituent sections. That is the request line, the header fields, and the body. If you would like a refresher on how those are formatted, I'll post a link to this tutorial again in the description. But basically, we have three sections to an HTTP request. That is the request line, a section of header fields, and then the body. We will not always have a body, but we will have basically these three sections. So before we get into actually doing something with the header fields, which is the subject of today's video, I want to address a few changes I made to the code off camera. I did a little bit of bug fixing, and I know some of you guys are following along with me as I write this. So I want to be thorough and explain all of the problems that I find. That way I don't actually give you bad code in the end. Just a warning that I am sort of making this as I'm showing you videos. So there will probably be bugs as we go forward. And I will do my best to thoroughly explain all of the bugs I find and all of the problems I run into. But just know that if you are keeping up with me in the most up-to-date possible way, you will see some of the same bugs. So if you find them before I do, please let me know in the comments and I will praise you. So thank you for that. Anyway, let's talk about a few changes that I've made. First is in this actual HTTP request constructor. So we pass in a pointer to a string or a character array. And what happens here is that when you pass a character array, it becomes what is called a string literal. And a string literal is immutable. I cannot change the string literal. And what I was trying to do in order to separate out all of the header fields from the body was to insert a different character here in the blank line. And I use this bar character. But since in this function, this is a string literal, that actually doesn't work. So it's an easy fix. All I had to do was create a local variable that is a character array of exactly the same length and then copy the data from the request string into the local variable. Now I can edit the requested local string and everything works fine. So I just copy it over and then I can edit it. Simple fix. The next thing has to do with the way that I am compiling this library. And actually it affects pretty much all of the files we've made so far. And if we look at the binary search tree, for instance, you'll see that I used to have a function called create node or iterate, or let's look at insert because it's a public function in all of these. So it used to be called insert and now it's called insert underscore BST. This is because I am compiling this as a static library. What happens when you compile it as a static library is that you create sort of the first stage of a compiled file, and then you include all of those together in one library. That way you don't have to compile it again when you're trying to import it. If I didn't do that, then you would have to compile every single file that you import into your project, and that's just tedious, especially if there are hundreds of files. So a static library is just a way that you can compile with one additional file, and it just gives you everything you need. The downside is that I will end up with duplicate names. So insert was in binary search tree. It was in Q. It was in linked list. It was in dictionary. It was in all of these different files. And once you put them all together in that static library file, they conflict with one another and it won't actually compile. So I needed to be more specific here and say insert underscore BST. Now, this is a backend change. The user actually won't notice this. If we look at my actual struct for the binary search tree, the function pointer is still called insert. So you can still call binary search tree dot insert in order to use the function. It's just that the implementation of it in the dot C file needed a more specific name. So with that, we are good to go. And what else did I change? Was there something? Yes. So in the insert function, insert underscore BST, I forgot to check if the tree didn't have a head. And so what it would do when you tried to put your first item into the tree is it would try to see if 
the head, which at the time was null, had a next or had a previous, and that just doesn't make any sense because it's null. So I just have to check if the tree has a head when I try to insert something. If it does, great. If it doesn't, whatever you're trying to insert is the head. So easy fix. And the last thing I did was pretty much just aesthetic. I just added some comments and made things a little cleaner. And I created this make file, which I will talk about more in depth at another time. But basically, it just gives you easy ways to compile this yourself. So if you download the code from GitHub, link in the description, then you can just use my make file to compile the library and it will be really easy to use. And then you'll just be able to include the header files I created for each of the different subsections of the library. Anyway, today we are going to be working on the HTTP request, and we are going to try and parse out the header fields. So we've extracted the header field as a whole. So we have all of that together as one string. And what we need to do is get each individual line and say this part before the colon is the key, and this part is the value. To do this, we can use the same string token function that we have been using up here to actually separate each of these parts. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. We're going to need to use one of the data structures that I created earlier. And the reason is that string token is a destructive function. Once I call string token, the original string becomes modified and I can't get it back. So if I say use an algorithm that we have our string of all the header fields, I extract the first line, then I extract the key, then I extract the value, I won't be able to go back to the rest of that header fields section to get the next key value pair. So what I have to do is extract all of the key value pairs in individually and then extract them as keys and values next. And to do this, we're going to use a queue. Now, I realize this constructor is a bit messy, but the different parts to it are kind of complicated, so I'm going to just implement them in a messy way and then clean it up later. So what we're going to do first is create an instance of a queue. In order to do this, I need my queue library. And the HTTP request is going to, as the structure, is going to contain a dictionary of these key value pairs. So I need a dictionary in this header field and I need a queue in the implementation file. So I could just in my .h file import all of my data structures. And if I was using this in a project that was actually just referencing my library rather than building on it, I would do that. It's just a lot easier. But since this is actually part of the library itself, I don't want to do that. I want to just import exactly the thing I need. So this is not how I would do it in an actual implementation or an actual usage of the library. This is how I'm doing it within the library itself. So here I'm going to include dot dot slash dot dot slash data structures slash lists. No, not lists slash dictionary slash dictionary dot h. And then here in the dot h file, let's close all of these. In the dot h file or the dot c file, I'm going to include dot dot slash dot dot slash data structures slash lists slash q dot h. Okay. So what we're going to want to do first is actually instantiate our dictionary. So we'll say h or request dot. Is it saved? We didn't actually add it in. So struct dictionary header fields. So our re request dot header fields equals dictionary constructor. And we're going to need to pass this a comparison function. Now off camera, I created a generic comparison function for this object. So if we look at the dictionary.c file, we can see that this is my compare string keys. And I need to change the name here. We're doing bug fixes as we go. So this is just a generic one. It takes two entries as its void pointers. That is a dictionary entry. And it will return 
one, zero, or negative one, depending on the value as of the key of those entries using the string compare function. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. First, I say entry one is a void pointer. So we are going to cast that as a entry struct. And then we are going to extract the key from it. But that whole thing, the key, is also a void pointer. So I need to cast that as a string or a character array or a character array pointer. So that's what all this is doing. And essentially, it's just comparing the keys and seeing if one is greater than the other. So I can just pass that function directly into here. So we'll say, what did I even call that? Compare string keys. And what do we want? Void pointer entry one and ooh, void pointer entry two. Okay, so that will construct our, our dictionary for us, unless it doesn't like it. What does it not like? Ah, I'm not actually supposed to include that part. I just need to pass it the function name. Okay, so that is going to create our dictionary for us. And now we need a queue to store the header fields. And the reason I want a queue rather than a linked list is that I can just say, I know that I'm going to always take from the front and always add to the back. It doesn't matter what order I do, a stack would work just as fine. I could use a linked list and put these things in manually, but I just want it to be easy. I already have a queue, that's all we're gonna need. So we're going to create a struct queue headers equals queue constructor. Fortunately, this requires no arguments, so that's easy. And now what we're going to do is insert each line, not over there, each line from the header fields section into the queue. So we are going to first extract the first token. So we'll say character pointer token equals string token. And the string we want to take it from is header fields. And we want we want to separate it on the new line character. And then while token, so while there is still a token in the token, while, while we can still extract more, we are going to insert that into queue. So headers.push, and this is going to take a reference to the queue. So address of headers, we're going to pass it token, and token's already a pointer, so we don't need to say the address of it. But then we do need to dereference it as we get the size of it. That way we can get the size of the data stored in it rather than the size of the pointer. So here it's a pointer, here it needs to be the actual data, so that's how we do this. And then we need to update our token. So token equals string token. We pass it null so that it continues using the same string, and we still want to split it on backslash n. Okay, so that's going to extract all of the header fields one at a time into our queue. So now I want to extract each field individually from the queue and separate it to create my key value pair. So I'm going to create a character pointer called header. I'm using that word a lot. I think it's going to get confusing, but I'm going to change it later. And we're going to set it equal to headers.peak. We need to pass that a reference to headers and cast it as a character pointer. Okay, so that's going to give us the entire string for one field. And while header, so while that's not returning null, what we're going to do is extract the key value pair. So we are going to take a string token, we'll say character pointer key equals string token, and we're going to use header, and we're going to split it on the colon, and then a character pointer value, yeah, because it's going to be a string in there, so string token null to use the same one, 
And we're also going to split it. Let's split it on a new line character. No, it won't give us the new line character. It doesn't really matter what we split it on here so long as it's not in the string. So let's just use the vertical bar because that's pretty uncommon. This is just going to give us the rest of the string anyway. So we're just going to use some character that's probably not going to be in there. So that gives us our key and our value. And now we're going to say dictionary, not dictionary, we're going to say request dot header fields dot insert and here we are going to pass in key and then size of the dereferenced key we'll pass in value size of dereferenced value and first I need to pass it the self so address of request dot header fields. See if it gets mad at me here. Nope, it liked that. So this is going to insert each as a key value pair. It's actually quite simple. So at the end of this, within the, uh, the dictionary of header fields in our HTTP request, we end up with a searchable section of key value pairs. So I can search for host and it will return that value. And so that's basically how we're going to use this. And the next step is going to be to do basically the same thing for the body and of course to clean up this code a little bit because this function is becoming quite the mess. So the body is going to be a bit trickier because we can get various types of bodies in here. So we can see here we have something that's key value pairs where the each key value pair is separated by that ampersand and each key is separated from its value with an equals. So we can parse it that way. Or we could parse something like this. This is XML and so our actual request field, the body, can have different types of content in it. So we're going to need to take into account the content type in order to know how we are supposed to parse this. And that's going to be tricky. So fortunately, we can get our content type from the header fields. So we are one step closer to that. But we need to basically have different ways of grabbing this. The easiest one is going to be this one, the URL encode, and that's probably going to be the most common, at least for the application I am designing this web server for, that is to host my own website. I can say with some degree of certainty what I'm going to be getting in this body. I, I can pretty much know that it's going to look like this, or maybe it's going to be JSON. So. I could just implement that just to get my website up and running, but we will see. I'm gonna to have to do some more experiments and see exactly what I want to do there. But that's probably where we're going to leave it off for today. Not so fast. So I actually have a, another few lines of code that I need to add to my loop. So down here I had set the header fields, but I never updated what the header was. So this would have been an infinite loop. So I have to actually remove the head, so using the pop function, and then I have to set the header character array to the next item in the list. That way it would actually update and we would get new ones each time. So that is actually the end of it. And also someone had asked that I increase the font size and I totally forgot to do that for the first part of this video. So apologies there. I'm going to increase it here and just leave it up for a second because I want you to be able to actually read this. And in the future, I will do my best to actually remember to do it in the video. So sorry it was not in there this time. But that is in fact going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, you can like it and subscribe to the channel and all the good stuff. And that'll do it for today. So thank you for watching and toodaloo.